<laughs> Hi, Ron. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing fine. Great. It's an honor to have you on the phone for our little show here. Um, I want to start off with a question right away. We've talked about scum in the show already. Can you explain to our audience what scum means and what it actually is? Uh, sure, I'll try. Uh, scum stands for the Script Creation Utility for Maniac Mansion, and it's a uh, computer programming language or a development system for making adventure games. And I created it when I was making the very first Maniac Mansion game to kind of help that, uh, that kind of technical and creative process of making adventure games. And the SCUM system uh, has been used in almost all of uh, LucasArts' um, adventure games. All right. Um, I really got to ask you this. Do you ever get sick and tired of talking about Monkey Island? <laughs> You know, uh, I, I really don't. There, there was a, a period maybe, you know, five years ago where I was, you know, kind of starting to get tired of people asking me about, you know, just about Monkey Island or mostly about Monkey Island. But I think, you know, especially in the last couple of years, I think I've really kind of come to appreciate, you know, what that game has meant to a lot of people and also, you know, what that game has meant to me as well. And so, you know, I, I don't get tired of talking about it. All right. Out of all the games you've worked on, especially, of course, the point-and-click adventures, which one is the one you would like to make a sequel to if you, if you ever had the time and the money and somebody said, you have no limits, do whatever you would like to do? Well, I think without a doubt that would be Monkey Island. Yeah? I, I would I'd love to make a sequel to Monkey Island. Uh, you know, I did, I did Monkey Island 1 and I did Monkey Island 2, and I left uh, Lucasfilm after that, so I never really got to make Monkey Island 3, which, you know, I really had the whole story in my head, and I'd really love to kind of go back and, and make that version of the game. I, I couldn't make it exactly like I wanted to back then because there have been a couple other Monkey Island games that have come out, and I would kind of need to deal you know, with the whole Monkey Island universe and how it's changed, but I would, I would really love to make another Monkey Island game. I myself am a big Monkey Island fan. I absolutely love those games, although I do have to admit, do I have to admit um, when Part 3 came out, I was a bit disappointed. I personally, I know the game looks really, really good. I did not really like the style too much of, of the cartoons and how Guybrush looked, and also I thought some of the humor was missing, and uh, the whole story it just never connected to the second part for me. Will we ever find out how the whole story would have continued from Monkey Island 2? If you would have made Monkey Island 3, how the, you know, the whole storyline and everything, and the ending of Monkey Island 2, which was very, very bizarre for a lot of people? Yeah, that, the ending to Monkey Island 2 is definitely bizarre. I mean, I, I think the ending is one of those things that, you, you know, you either love it or you just completely hate it. Um, but but it, it was actually going somewhere. You know, I, I didn't do that ending just to be strange. It really yeah. was kind of part of the whole story. In, in terms of whether we're ever going to see that, you know, unfortunately, I don't own the rights to Monkey Island. You know, uh -huh. uh, LucasArts does. And so I think it's really, you know, going to be up to them about whether, you know, there's ever another Monkey Island game and, you know, if, if I'm the one to do it or not. Could you ever imagine going back there and working with them? I, you know, I don't think that's outside the realm of possibility. I would certainly love, I would love to make another Monkey Island game. How happy are you with Monkey Island 3? I, I was actually very pleased with Monkey Island 3. You know, um, you know, uh, the, the guys who made it, you know, Jonathan and, and, uh, and Larry, they, you know, they didn't know what was in my head about the third game because I never really talked about that with anybody. So, you know, they were kind of just, you know, working in the blind, so to speak, with that, and I, and I think they did a, I think they did a really good job. I think the humor, you know, was 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 right up there, and um, you know, there were things about the story that didn't really sync with, you know, kind of my vision for the world. But I think generally, I was I, I was very pleased with my Cam Three. How come you left Lucas Arts though? Uh, I left Lucas Arts uh, because I really wanted to start my own company. And um, I, I kind of, I also wanted to do smaller games. I, I really had this kind of idea of doing these episodic adventure games back in 1992. And um, we really couldn't do them back then because we didn't have the internet to be able to distribute episodic stuff. And so, you know, the small episodic games kind of morphed into doing these adventure games for kids. You know, which is what Humongous Entertainment did, which is the company that I started after I left LucasArts. 
Um, you have a blog, which is called GrumpyGamer.com. It's, it's very funny. And you mentioned something in an interview or on your blog about a big secret. Can you tell us anything of what you meant with a big secret? Uh, the, the, the big the secret to Monkey Island secret? Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the first game's called The Secret of Monkey Island. And, uh, of course, the secret is never revealed in the game. And, and so a lot of people just want to know what, you know, what the secret to What Island. is a secret? But... <laughs> you know, and, and, and that really was all going to be kind of revealed in the third game, which was kind of, you know, my idea of the trilogy of these three games. Ron, so, it's okay. You so... can let it all out now. It's okay. <laughs> we're in a safe, you know, we're in a safe area here. It's fine. Let it out. Well, you and none of your listeners can tell anybody, okay? All right. I see I'm not, I'm not getting it out of you, am I? No, you're not. <laughs> Many have tried. All right. Do you still keep in, in contact with people like Tim Schafer, who you worked with back then? Uh, yeah, I actually see Tim Schafer almost every day. Oh, um, cool. I'm, you know, working on a design for, for a current game, and he's just kind of loaning me a desk at Double Fine. So I go into Double Fine every day and work on my game, and, and I see Tim. Uh, Dave Grossman, I, you know, I play poker with him maybe once a month or so, so I, I see Dave quite a bit as well. Oh, that's cool. Um, so you just said you're working on a current project. Can you tell us about any, anything about the project that you're working on right now? Well, the project is uh, its kind of an adventure kind of melded with uh, kind of a Diablo-style role-playing game. And it's a comedy, of course, with, you know, kind of what I do. And it's, a, it's an episodic game, so kind of like the, you know, the Simon Max games that Telltale is doing. It'll kind of come out in these, you know, smaller little episodes over time. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now uh, is uh, kind of designing that and also, you know, pitching it to publishers and, you know, trying to get funding and financing for it. So there's no release date as of yet or anything like that? No, not yet. But I'm really hoping, you know, within the next month or two that I'll, I'll have some pretty good information about that. How do you see the whole computer in the gaming industry now as compared to back then? Well, the really big difference is that there's a lot of money at stake right now. And, you know, back when I started in the industry, there just wasn't that much money involved in it. And so it was a lot easier to just, you know, to get projects started. It was easy to, to come up with interesting ideas and do things that really hadn't been done. And, and now, you know, people are spending, you know, 10 or $15 million to make a game, and then they spend another $10 million to market the game. And when you're spending that much money, there's just so many people that are involved in the creative process and the approval processes. There's just, there's just a lot less freedom, you know, creatively yeah. to, to, to make stuff. Would you say because of that, it's a lot harder to get creative ideas accomplished in the gaming industry? Oh, very much so, yes. It's a lot harder to get stuff made. What do you think the adventure genre? I mean, back in the day when it when it started, it was it was the big thing that really helped the PC rise to become a, a big time gaming platform. Why do you think nowadays it it's it's not that important anymore? Well, adventure games I think are are tricky games to design because they're very dependent on the story being being very good and very interesting, and they're very dependent on. The, the puzzles and the structure of the puzzles kind of being done really right. And I think those two things are very hard to do. And, I, and, and so I think a lot of adventure games that kind of came out, you know, right as the whole genre was kind of dying, they, they didn't have very good stories and they didn't have very good puzzle stuff. And we saw the emergence of games like Doom, which were just a lot more action and a lot more yeah. adrenaline, and people just kind of gravitated to that, in future games, I don't think we're really telling, you know, really, really good stories. It was just easy to kind of fuck all those people away. All right. Ron, I really appreciate you taking your time to have a little interview, a little chat with us. I hope uh, we'll see some of you in the future very soon, especially your games. And maybe before you take it to your grave, please tell us what the secret of Monkey Island is. I'm begging you. All of us out there would really appreciate it. All right, I'll remember that. And thanks a lot for having me. It's and, been a lot of fun. And if you ever come to Germany, you better come to our show. I, I promise you I will do that. All right. Thank you very much.
Ja, da habt ihr das gehört. Ron Gilbert, ich bin wirklich sehr, sehr stolz, mit dem Mann mal gesprochen zu haben. Einer meiner Lebenswünsche ist gerade in Erfüllung gegangen. Ich kann jetzt eigentlich glücklich sterben. Aber bevor ich das mache, schauen wir uns noch mal ein wenig Ingame-Material an. Wir haben ja gerade mit Indy 3 aufgehört, aber es gibt noch viel, viel mehr zu sehen von den ganzen coolen Scum- bzw. Point-and-Click-Spielen von